can you use 1.3 atmospheres? Do you need two atmospheres? Do you need two and a half atmospheres? How much pressure do you need to get the results you're looking for? That's what we're gonna cover in this video. How much pressure do you need to use for the next patient coming in for their next hyperbaric treatment? The answer is, as usual, it really depends. We know that soft chambers have an absolute effect on human physiology. We know that there are benefits to using what's called mild hyperbarics or lower pressures, that 1.3 atmospheric range. We also know that there's benefits of 1.5 and 2.0 and 2.5. There's different pressures that seem to have different effects ultimately on the patients. In some cases, it's just gonna have a very similar effect, but get it done in a faster pace at higher pressures. In some cases, patients might be sensitive to those higher pressures, in which case sticking with more mild or moderate pressures might be more appropriate. Other cases, there might be issues that the patients are experiencing that those mild or moderate pressures just can't help. And so what we need to do is we need to create a continuum of care. We need to be able to match the pressure we're using in the chamber with whatever the patient's health goals or health challenges actually are. When we do that, we need to consider experience. We need to consider what equipment we have access to or what equipment the patient has access to. And we need to absolutely also consider what the research tells us on what the best practices are, what's the right protocol for this patient for this issue. In a lot of cases right now, there's not extensive research on all the different types of pressures that could be used for all the different types of patients and issues. And so we need to basically understand what's out there and try to extract the best information we can. We know, let's say for stem cells, there's a paper on two atmosphere treatment and they did 60 sessions and they saw an eight times increase in mesenchymal stem cells and central nervous system stem cells. Does that mean that 1.5 or 1.75 can't do it? Does that mean you get a tenfold or a 12 fold at 2.2 or 2.5? The answer is we don't really know. Recently, there was a paper done with almost the exact same metrics that this 2.0 study did, but they used a soft chamber, 1.3 only, and air. And they found somewhere between a two and a half and three times increase in those same stem cells. And so at that lower pressure, we saw a stem cell response. It was just a lower stem cell response. Is that enough for that patient? That's your decision to make clinically. Could you continue to treat that person at a lower atmospheric pressure over a longer period of time, even though there's only a two and a half to three times increase, could we continue to stimulate that over a period of time to get something more similar to let's say that eight times increase in two months? The real answer is we don't know, but it's reasonable to believe that that might be true. In certain infections, higher pressure might be better. Let's say Lyme disease has been shown to be killed at 2.4, 2.6. And so that really high pressure can actually kill the spirochete. Does that mean every Lyme patient needs 2.6 atmospheres? Not necessarily. Many chronic Lyme patients don't really even do well at those higher pressures, nor are they dealing with an active acute Lyme infection. In fact, they're dealing with inflammation and all the degeneration and damage done by the infection over all these years. And so a lot of those patients might actually be treated at that more mild or moderate range of pressure and get amazing benefits because you're still reducing inflammation, but now you're restoring normal cell function and you're starting to get tissue healing and regeneration as a result. You have patients, let's say, with inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's where there's you know, non-healing wounds internally in the intestines. Well, we know that hyperbaric is amazing for non-healing wounds on the exterior surface, we do that all the time in the hospital setting or in the private clinic. Hyperbaric absolutely helps those, those non-healing wounds finally heal. Those are typically done at two, two and a half atmospheres. And so on the flip side, if you have a patient with inflammatory bowel disease with really terrible ulcerations and non-healing internal wounds, that same pressure range is probably most appropriate to try to get those ulcers and non-healing internal wounds to finally start to heal and repair. So higher pressure could be very appropriate for them. At the same time, they may just have generalized intestinal inflammation without really deep ulcerations or fissures or fistulas where we're trying to reduce the inflammation but not necessarily heal non-healing non tissue or a non-healing wound or a fissure or fistula, which may then allow us to use more mild or moderate pressures to just get the inflammation down and start the tissue repair process. So the answer is it varies dramatically. What you need to do is you need to understand the pathology. 
what is going on inside that patient? What is the problem? What are the challenges that they're facing? What is the physiology of their disease? And then you need to understand this entire continuum and range of pressures and how the different pressures have different effects inside their body. And then how to apply those right protocols and those proper pressures to make sure that you're delivering exactly what that patient needs for whatever health challenge they have or to help them meet whatever health goal they're trying to get to. These are the kinds of things that we teach in our certification courses because we're trying to help practitioners actually understand at that level how to develop their own protocols so that they could be as effective as they can be with the patients that they're treating. So I hope this helps you. I hope this helps you understand a little bit more about how different pressures affect the body in different ways. We do have a lot of other videos on topics like this, so please check our library of videos. And if you feel like you want a little bit extra help and you really need to understand this at a, at a deeper level, check out our courses and all of our online education platforms so that you can understand this stuff as well as we do and that you can apply this to your patients also. Please like it, please subscribe. That helps us reach more people looking for information just like this. And share this video with another practitioner or another friend who you think might benefit from this content. See you next time.